Hi, Chicken Bone John here, and I'm going to be talking about installing machine heads of different types to give you the sort of most reliable and trouble free way of doing it. It's a simple subject, but if you do get it wrong, uh, it can cause all sorts of problems with tuning, breaking strings, jam machine heads, and so forth. So let's get on and have a look at that. Uh, let's have a look at this very simple guitar and how the machine heads are installed these these have got bushings not absolutely essential but they're easy to fit and it does give a better bearing of the posts against the machine head helps spread the load uh helps reduce any problems let's just flip over and have a look at this on the back as you can see these are pretty tight together you've got to watch this type of machine head which is that these have got a sort of basically a square footprint if you get so if you get them as close to this you, you've got this little overlap sometimes you may find you've not got enough width or spacing between the machine heads to get them to fit properly so word to the wise just just check lay them out on your bench to make sure you've got enough clearance here's another guitar very very similar setup three machine heads these are a nicer open back style as you can see with this scalloped setup here, it means you can move them closer together. Now, in the previous video, I did talk about the aspect that these are technically wrapped around the wrong way. How you normally, normally the, the, the string would come on the inside of this, but, that, but this arrangement allows a nice straight string pull that type of machine head need fitting that way around. So the post is nearer the nut and the button is higher up towards the headstock. There's a little cog. Now what happens if you put, if you imagine that's under load, that post is going to be pulled that way and it's going to tend to lean like that and it's going to actually push that cog, it's going to pivot around here it's actually going to push that cog in contact with this worm thread if you put it the other way around the wrong way around the loading on the post is going to pull it that way it's going to tend to pull the post that way so it's going to pull that gear this brass cog away from this worm so it could cause it to slip or at least stop having a good contact and it could actually mash that up if there's not much contact if it's only contacting on the edges of the teeth it may pull it apart so that's a basic style of machine head open back you, you can take these apart because it's got it's just held in by this little hook this pressing in the uh in in the base plate so you can reverse these over. It's always worth buying sets like this. Or if you buy a set of six, split them, do one like that, and then the other, reverse it over. So as I say, these sets of machine heads, we call, these are like the old Grover Statite pattern. There's a very nice quality. And these the base plates on these are actually a casting. They're not a pressing. They're cast. Uh, and they're, they're, they're a much nicer build. Yes, the, 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 this is a lot more precisely machined. Okay, so with this, the little screw on the end secures the button. So if that feels a little bit loose, you can tighten it up. If the, act, the, if the whole action of the machine head feels a little loose, you can tighten that up and it will pinch this together and give you a little bit more friction so it's not as loose but there's there's very little backlash or movement on these these are a very nice quality machine head okay so here's another fairly common type of machine head these are epiphone clusen style so these have got a sealed back they've got a pressed metal cover but inside they're just the same as the other machine head you can see this is crimped on with a couple of lugs here so you can't get in there so uh, you, you can't tighten them up or adjust them but they are a good quality 
and they have got this classic look to them. Again, they've got this scalloped back plate so you can fit them a little closer uh, to one another. So this is yet another pattern and you can see this is sealed. It's in uh, like a die cast housing. So you can't get at these, but again, the buttons are held on by a little screw. So you can, if there's any slack, you can just pinch that up. The other thing with these is they have a separate bushing which screws into this. I'll show you the difference between the bushings. For this type of machine head, they have a screw down bushing. So there's a washer, goes through there, you drill a 10 millimeter hole, and then the washer goes on the top of the uh, headstock, and that screws down, and effectively, this clamps the thing down onto the machine head, and that screw is really just to stop it rotating. The neat thing about this particular brand or this style of machine head, it's got this straight inline lug, which means you can fit a pair of these back to back very close together. With the other, with the open back and the Clusen type of machine head, you have this loose bushing. Normally about a nine mil drill, and that simply is held in by friction. You just tap that in with a soft hammer into the headstock, and it sits like that. As I was saying with the uh, in my early video, if you make the headstock too thin, you can see you get a lot of this shaft actually sticking out, and there's a lot of leverage. What you want to be doing is you want you, you, this shaft to be supported about halfway up its length uh, so that it's it, that that's the way they work best if you wrap them really high and start getting close to that you'll still be able to get the the string wrap around but it's getting a little bit close it won't do any uh it won't do anything for the angle of the string going over the nut but i think about halfway up the cap up of the post is about where you want your bushing to be sitting Okay, here we've got some more different open back type machine heads. Here we've got these fancy oval back plates embossed with an ebony button. Here's another one on the uh, stay tight pattern with an engraved button. Again, you've got the little screw on the end holding the, uh, the metal button on with the open cogs. This is another variation on the machine head, and this is a locking type. And what happens when you thread your string into the hole in the post and turn this knob on the back, there's a little, I don't know if you're able to see it, but there's a pin runs through this, which is hollow, and clamps the string in the hole. So it's not relying on the string wrapping round the post for the friction. I think there are several videos on YouTube on how to string a guitar. Uh, and I may do another one on that. But what is important is you don't want too many wraps round the post. Two or three is enough to generate sufficient friction between the string post and the string to stop it slipping. If you have any more, it'll start bunching up. If you have any less, it might actually pull out. There's not enough friction in there. So two to three wraps is all you need. And what I found is when you're stringing it, if you pull the string through the hole on the capstan and then back it off about 25 millimeters or an inch, that's just enough to give you a couple of wraps around there. Handy hint there. Okay, thanks for watching and bye for now.